please come on in come on in we're gonna do a little farmhouse tonight so i like to pin um the fabric you know what you can totally do too i'm gonna show you guys like if the fabric is this dark you can cheat if the fabric is totally dark i've done this before you don't even need like something expensive look take is this gonna fit over here oh yeah i can fit it over there look take your pen or marker oh i just traced my finger by accident it's not kindergarten um you can take your pen you can take a, a marker it doesn't have to be one of those fancy fabric disappearing markers if it's something dark like this you can totally just cheat and do that okay so we're actually going to cut two of each um fabric because what we're going to do is we're going to make uh basically like four quadrants uh, or four sections on the ball and it, we've done the same thing on the eggs so the eggs we did the same thing we made four little quadrants and um so each little quadrant or uh, quarter whatever you want to call it section is a uh, different pattern but so two of them will be the same so it's just basically skipping so like almost like here we did this pink uh, glittery pattern and then we have the uh, leopard glitter pattern so it just alternates so basically we have an alternating fabric color okay so let's get another jean one in here and I'm just I'm just kind of skipping over a section because I don't want to iron right now we, we don't have time to iron right now we were already late two minutes or so good thing about this styrofoam ball like these smooth ones you can actually kind of see in here is they have little lines it's very faint to see on the camera but they have little seam lines basically from where the styrofoam ball kind of is put together and then they also have points on the top and on the bottom where you can automatically center yourself so what we're going to do is we've already marked off our four um, marking points of where the quadrants are going to be so we're going to just do this um, on camera real quick and I'm going to do it facing me because otherwise the line's going to be off and I tried that last time with you guys but my line was totally off so I'm just going to go from the very top here maybe I'll do it this way so that you guys can actually see but I can't do it the other way or it's going to be totally off so I'm just going to make a cut and you can totally draw it out first if you want and I know I'm not hitting the middle mark right away um, because I, my phone's buzzing and I just want to make sure it wasn't anything wrong with the live um, but it's because I know I was trying to shoot for like a quarter inch mark and I was just using the um, sewing um measurement strip here the seam the seamstress one so it doesn't really give you exact like and i was using centimeters because i like to measure in the centimeters <laughs> so either way so all i did was take my top here i drew a little point here which i'm so close to so i'm fine with and then i met right at the bottom okay and i'm taking my exacto knife and so i'm going to do this three more times all right and I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting the right measurement because I screwed up at one point. Totally screwed up at one point. Okay, so let's do this one. So I'm just kind of going in by like, I don't know, like a quarter of an inch into the ball and making a cut from the very top to the very bottom so if this takes such little glue okay so don't get scared that like this takes a lot of glue all right so where I want to make sure this is gonna line up okay so this should line up now so I screwed up on making a mark before because I let go of the tape and it slid and I 
didn't fix it, so it was like slightly off. And you see my calculator because I was just calculating out how many, <laughs> how many divided by four needed to be what number. Come on, guys. No one's ever done that. We'll put that away. We don't need it. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, so we've got four quadrants. We've got our, um, I don't even know if you can see. I'm going to make sure because you guys are zoomed in. Okay, so up here. It was so hard to see. So we've got our little middle point here. I know it's kind of hard to see with the light. But one, two, three, and four up here. Up here. Okay, um, so let's start with sticking this stuff in. So what I like to use for my tool a little secret tool <laughs> told you guys a secret before so it's not a big secret <laughs> all right so we've got our four pieces okay so we've got our um two pieces of jean and we've got our um buffalo plaid with our with our sunflowers so we're gonna put this at the top so the point is to try and overlap your fabric over the point just slightly like even if it's just like quarter of an inch okay and what I like to try and do, because this is just the easiest way for me to do it, is I like to hold where that overlap is right on the top there. Then I find the bottom of the ball. Okay, so see that little blue point right there. And I line that up. And if this is way overlapped, then I kind of just adjust it so that it's a little bit more even on both sides. All right, so it's overlapped pretty evenly on both the bottom and the top. Now, what you got to have to be careful is, so this line and this line here, they both have to have an overlap of fabric. So we're going to make sure that that's happening, and usually by like about another quarter of an inch as well, okay? So I think that looks good right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tool, which is actually a Cricut spatula tool. It's perfect for this guy. It's perfect. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tool and just kind of shimmy the fabric right into that hole that you created that slice. Okay. Now you want to be careful because so if you keep pushing too hard, you might what you do start doing is pushing too much on this side to go that way. So you want to be careful and also kind of do one side and then immediately the other side so that you know you're going to have enough to cover both sides, okay? So it's so easy if you screw up to undo something because all you have to do is literally pull this back out, okay? So there's no glue involved yet, all right? And I'm telling you, this is the easiest Thing. this is easier than making pumpkin pie okay <laughs> I can tell you that so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure because I've just picked this up and put this down too many times pick things up and put them down all right and then I'll look at the screen for a second in a second to see if there's any questions so I'm just gonna push this into that little edge there and just see like I'm kind of like shimming in, in there all right so if there's any fabric strays, you can pull them out. But see how it's on one side it's in here. Okay, so that's already in. And then this side is already in as well. All right. So we're going to keep doing that um, throughout the whole piece of it. I'm just making sure I'm holding on to it right. So I'll just keep doing it. And I just kind of use the tool to just straighten out the fabric a little bit too. Okay, as I go down. Okay. And so you don't have to use this tool. I'm going to come back here for just a minute to because I it's easier for me to hold it against the table um, than to have it up in the air and try and hold anything. So um, see how that's already taking shape from here to here and here to here. All right, so we're going to keep going. And the fun part about this is you really can't go wrong unless you cut your fabric too short. So if you cut your fabric too short or too small, 
then yeah you probably are going to have um, an issue because then you have not enough to tuck into that groove uh, that you've cut but if you cut too much which you don't want to cut too too much because then you're just wasting fabric but if you cut too much like see this piece right here i have like this little tail sticking out so i like to use is these cuticle cutter scissors that no one's used for any kind of um health care or, or cosmetic care we just bought these and this is what we use them for because they're curved so see the curve in them because I can get straight down right to the ball without having any leftover. Um, they aren't as strong as some scissors, I know that, but I really, really like these for getting down into the project and cuts real close. See that? So we're almost done with one quarter. So see here guys, I screwed up a little bit. The fabric is bunched up a little bit, so I'm just gonna pull that right right back out I think you guys are too close now that I, if I go that way you guys won't see um, so I'm gonna push the fabric right back out and then just tuck it in again and that got rid of that little bump and we're good to go again so that's what I love about these they are so forgiving to do because it's like oh I screwed up and have a little too much fabric let me fix that now you don't want to get the screw up of, oh crap, I don't have enough fabric. But look at that. I can't even see if you guys can see. So look at this. Look how cute this little farmhouse ball is gonna be. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I am so excited and I just can't hide it. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. So we checked on the top. We're slightly over there. We checked on the bottom. We're slightly over our seam. Now we're gonna check our sides. And we're slightly over there. So we're gonna start with one side. I think I'm gonna start with this side. Okay. And then we're gonna go right to this side. And I'm gonna let go for a second for the ends because it's getting, it, the, the larger ball is harder for me to hold because my hands are so small. And the reason I like using this um, Cricut spatula, honest to God, is because it's like, literally, look at how paper thin that is. Paper thin. So you can literally get into these slices that you made in the styrofoam without making like big gouges in the cuts, the cuts that you already have. Because that's like key too. You don't want like these huge gouges that you gotta like now try and figure out that your trim doesn't maybe cover it so if you guys guess can you guess what we're gonna use for trim <laughs> we're gonna use the jute rope So see that, how that's coming out, but see how I have this extra right here? Let's fix that extra, okay? So we're just gonna take our scissors and trim that up. I know we had less to trim before, which is fine. I wanna make sure I wasn't way overreaching and we're trimming and we're gonna be in trouble. Okay. So just try and trim up as much as you can. There we go. Okay. And then if you can, kind of sneak more of that edge of the fabric in there. Just because we're gonna use rope um, and it's not too, too wide. So I want to try and hide the um, wrong side of this fabric from kind of like popping out or anything. Just because that's, that's me being a little anal. Now we don't have to be so specific on the very top um, or the very bottom because that will cover more. But because the top, we're going to use 
if you guessed it, a sunflower. So the cool thing, you can use anything on this top. You could use um, embellishment kind of jewels. You can use like old rustic buttons. Um, you could put like a cowbell. You could um, put like a, um, oh, we saw little bees. We saw little bees there when we were looking. Oh, that's but we we got is the ladybugs. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to make a ladybug one. Look how that's coming out. I'm liking it. If you guys like it so far, if you think it's easy, let me know. Hit that little heart button if you think it's a project that you could do that's super easy. Like you can do this with any fabric. You and you don't need a lot of fabric. That's the best part. You don't need a ton of fabric. Look, look. I mean. You can buy like those four inch cuts. I think Joanne's does as low as four inch cuts. Um, it's either four inches or six inches. Oh my goodness. You can go into the, like the little remnant section for leftovers. If your Dollar Tree has fabric, try that. My Dollar Tree never has fabric, so I couldn't help you there. Not even if I tried. Okay, what size ball? So this is a four inch ball that I'm using. And so our pattern will cover up to a four inch ball um, if you end up purchasing the pattern. So the pattern is gonna be a twofer that I put out tomorrow. Um, the pattern will be for the at least up to a four inch ball and it will be for the eggs. And this is like almost like a three inch egg. Um, that they cover the styrofoam eggs as well. So it'll be a two first. So you get a pattern for up to a four inch ball. And what that means is you can absolutely use the pattern for a smaller ball, like this um, Dollar Tree um, set that comes with two, two for a dollar. Uh, so you could do a smaller ball and all you have to do is cut the pattern down. So as long as you cut it out on a piece of paper, you could um, make multiples of these and then just cut them down to size for the three inch ball. So um, you almost get like more than a twofer because if you're um, getting to a, a pattern for up to a four inch ball, that means you could use it for any size up to four inches. And here's the thing guys, so like it's really not that hard to figure out. So I give you up to a four inch ball, but so say you went even bigger. Well then if you have like a pretty steady hand then all you have to do is either cut out or draw out something a little bit larger than this and you could use it for something even larger just just saying just saying i know i probably shouldn't be saying it but it's true <laughs> Okay. 
And this one, this pattern is not going to have a restriction for just personal use, to be honest with you. You just can't sell the pattern itself. So like you could use this to make your own, um, you know, decorative balls to sell in your own shop or anything, or if you sell just locally, however you sell. Um, this, this I'm not going to limit. Um, the only thing I'm going to limit is you can't resell the pattern. You can't share the pattern. You can't resell the pattern. So if your best friend says, hey, Millie, I want you to, you know, tell me how you made those little uh, styrofoam balls, you should be able to tell them, hey, you know what? My girl, Kathy, at Santa Marta Designs, you can either go watch her replay <laughs> on her Facebook page. And she'll show you, or better yet, you can go check out the pattern in her Etsy shop, and you can buy them there. <laughs> um, so that would be awesome. <laughs> so this one, um, we're going to cut a little extra off and try not to stick so much in here because now we've got both sides already with fabric in before the jean material goes in and the jean material is much much thicker than the cotton so that's why we're just trimming that off because otherwise we're going to have a lot of jean edge sticking out and we don't want it to pop out uh, on top of the cord so that's why we're doing the trim now before we stick this any further in here we want to try and make sure we can kind of hide this as much as possible even though it's being a little finicky so I don't think I'm going to trim down the pattern either on the size because this is just because this excess is always going to happen usually when you get down to the last little quarter because you already have fabric already in on both sides so it's it gets a little tough to kind of squeeze everything in there. Now, if you're using different trims, so like if I was using like a braid gimp trim, I probably wouldn't even be um, worrying so much about this or taking so much time to kind of make sure everything is tucked in. But since I'm us using like a kind of thinner jute uh, rope to trim it and outline it, then I kind of want to make sure my ends are tucked in enough because if you use like a gimp um, like half inch trim that you would never see this I would just be putting the trim on already I wouldn't even be still fussing with these edges and look how cute this is guys oh my god so we have used no glue no glue and look not coming apart it's not anything okay so now here's the thing we're gonna move all this out of the side we're gonna put this on top so here's the thing um, I'm probably you could make a little bit bigger gouge um, in here and basically what would happen I'm just gonna make sure you guys are in camera so basically what happened you could make a bigger gouge in here in the middle to actually stick um, your your stem in. I, now I took the actual wire out, but this is that little plastic stem that goes into the wire, so I just popped them off the, the wire. If you wanted it to stick up off the flower like that, which I don't know why you would, but just in case you do, then you can leave the wire in. But I want it just flush with the ball. So what I think we're going to do is we're actually going to cut this stem part off okay now you could make a little gouge and stick that in there but i'm just afraid that the material is going to get a little bit loose and things like that and i don't want to fidget with it too much so we're just going to use this as our center point to go ahead and stick right to the top there and then we'll just smush that real tight in there um, we're actually going to get our wire cutters and see if we can't trim this stem off just a little wee bit more Okay, without breaking our flower. Okay, and let's make sure our hot glue gun should be hot, feeling hot, hot, hot. 
So is there one side, oh, got glue on me already. Um, just checking to see, is there one side of our ball I like better than the other to be on the bottom, on the top? So I like this side better, I don't know why. But I always, there was always one side that I like better. So we're gonna put that there for a sec. We're going to put glue on the very center and let it spread that way. So that way I don't have to worry about it going way too far out. Okay, so we're going to squish that on there for a sec. I just forgot to put the trim on before I put the damn flower on. <laughs> this is what happens when I'm talking too much. Oh, I can't believe I just did that. I'm going to talk for, be quiet for a second and then talk. Thankfully, this is a forgiving ball that I can just sneak this under the flower. But let me tell you the right way to do it. <laughs> you put your trim on first and then you put your topper on. <laughs> oh my Lord, I just can't believe I did that. So this is the only part I shoot a little bit of tiny glue into is the trim. Not a lot. So little, a little goes a long way because you don't want to make those big glue globs come out. Well, this is a good way to show you that if you screw up, you can really fix it. There is nothing really you can't fix unless it's like, you cut something too short, then I don't know what to tell you guys. Then, then that one I can't help you. The trim you can do several ways. So if you're gonna do one of these with like, um, say it for to be like maybe like an ornament or to hang somewhere, then you may not even need. Um, like the uh, glue on the trim, especially if you tie it real tight with a loop on the top. But I just like the like the shot of glue um, in here to just make sure that it's gonna stay where I want it to stay and it's not gonna kind of like move. Um, you know, maybe if like while you're handling it, if you pull on it real tight or grab it the wrong way, I don't want the trim to kind of like slide and kind of go all over the place. So that's why I like to just kind of hit it with just a couple of shots of glue in certain places um, that just make sure it's going to stay where I want it to stay. So the very bottom here, let me just make sure you guys can see. So the very bottom here, I just kind of overlap one over the other. All right. So it's the same exact process as when we did the eggs. It's just a different shape, literally. So all I'm doing is coming in here with like the finest thing of glue. Isn't that fantastic? Eek! I love it. How cute would this be in your wreaths, guys? For the farmhouse look. You could even do it for fall too. These are so cute. You could add jewels on the top. Um, you could add like old rustic buttons, like I said. You could add like um, a bell if you wanted to. You could add all sorts of things. All sorts of things. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now remember, if you guys wanted a DIY supply kit for making the bunny, the mini bunny top hat, I have the kits available in my shop already tonight. And you need, the, I'll tell you guys tonight, you need to buy the pattern with the top hat supply kit um, at the same time in order to get the discount on the pattern. So the pattern is usually $10.99. Um, and it's going to be $5 instead if you buy the supply kit with it. So you need to use the code at checkout, um, all caps, bunny hat, B U N N Y H A T. So use the code bunny hat. The kit is $22.99 and you literally get everything. The only thing you need to have is a hot glue gun, glue sticks, 
Um, let's see what else. Hot glue gun, glue sticks, an iron ironing board, and that instruction stuff will be in the pattern stuff for you. Um, and wire cutters. That's it. Scissors. Five things. Scissors. And those are like basic things that you guys all have at home. So hot glue gun, glue sticks, wire cutter, scissors, ironing board iron. iron. So check that out. So um, if you want one, there's only 10 available. That's all I could su secure right now for supplies, literally, and I was hunting all day. So um, it's $22.99 for the kit, and it's $5 for the pattern. You get the, the pattern at um, more than half off if you buy the kit, the DIY kit. So $22.99, put, put that in your cart, then put the pattern in your cart, and once you put those two things in your cart, make sure you use the coupon code BUNNYHAT, B-U-N-N-Y-H-A-T. Um, I don't think the kits are gonna last very long, so if you want some, check them out. I'll be up is the pattern for the eggs, for these styrofoam eggs to make. So this is for the eggs, and I gave you four on a sheet, so that way you, when you go to print, you only have to waste one sheet of paper. I'm trying to be really good about making sure you guys um, spend the less, least amount of money um, and I put the size of the actual styrofoam egg on here and this I think I'll only be able to get two to a page on here so that way you don't have to kind of print four pages out I'll probably you'll probably have to print two pages out so in total you might have to print three pages out for the for the styrofoam egg and the round ball pattern all right and that will be up tomorrow in our shop all right guys Kathy here from Santa Marta Design. See you next Tuesday. Bye.